Okay. Today we had breakfast with Greg Dyke and found out his insider secrets. What's totally clear about him is that he still has a great sense of humor, even though at times he was at the center of the nation's dramas around things like the Hutton Report, uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and so on. And um, clearly he never stopped smiling. We started off talking about, you know, has democracy had it? What is the Berlin Wall moment? As the countries in Eastern Europe develop their civil society, are we alienated? And some of the points that Greg Dyke made are that the world has changed, but politics and politicians have remained the same. Under Blair, we evolved into a presidential system with no checks and balances, and now all power is with the Treasury, so we don't have any strategic vision. It's really all about penny pinching. And the communication systems we now have have transformed the country. But although that's led to good cultural changes because we used to be subservient and servile and we now have people like bloggers, Tim Montgomery of Conservative Home who are changing the world, we have more news and less thought. The 24-hour news cycle means that there's a lot of news but there's less time um, thinking about what you put into it and the programs that are made. We need to change people, institutions and structures. His attitude was that he questions everything and always pushes the envelope out. Being clever isn't enough. You actually need people with good ideas. Clever people are only people who could memorize what was given to them in books or lectures. And when you have good creative ideas and good people who aren't afraid to put those ideas forward, you'll have a successful organization. Staff need to feel valued. You can't win if you alienate the staff. Uh, Greg was asked whether um, his life was planned or whether it just happened. He laughed and said it pretty much it just happened. He was asked whether he was living his life purpose. I think he kind of ducked that one. And he was asked what he would put on his headstone. Again, he was more comfortable saying um, it's better to leave the world or the place you've just left a happier place. Um, he also said that it's important when you're a leader in a crisis not to be scared. And <laughs> some of the more personal things about having been a leader came out towards the end of his talk. He said, and I think this is familiar to everybody who's been, you know, the leader of a pressure group or the boss in a company or maybe a top government minister, you ask yourself, what am I? Am I really what that thing made me? Or was I only just that? So you're not important anymore. You're important one moment and the next you aren't. And so you're not really sure who you are. Are. Um, he has a house in Ireland. He says, in Ireland nobody gives a toss who you are or what you are. So that's a good advice, run away to Ireland. Um, although that might not be the case if you're a prominent Irish public figure. Um, when you're the ultimate boss, you're largely on your own. Again, something I think people who've reached leadership positions would recognize. And once you spend your life defending what is and stop looking forward, you're finished.